Yo, yo, train 2.0. Welcome to this live broadcast. Sorry, I haven't been live in a while. Um, maybe it was like Thursday or something. Um, maybe it's Friday, I'm not sure. But been busy working on big things um, for the train 2.0 members. Um, if you are a member, if you are subscribed, you will have um, seen something in your inbox where I'm talking about something really interesting. Um, subscribe to the um, the newsletter if you haven't already. Um, <clears throat> the um, So I've been working on that. And then, of course, on the weekend, I'm out watching games and uh, doing other fun stuff. So that that's what's going on. So anyway, hi. Hello, Sweden. Yuzumaki. Uh, I love the Scandinavians. Um, I've got a lot of uh, Swedish and Finnish um, followers. Uh, love you guys. Uh, the reason I love the Scandinavians is because they are often a model. And whether it's fictional or not, I kind of envision this ideal, um, this ideal hockey factory in uh in uh in Scandinavia where they take where they have something like 10 times less players sorry like something like 20 times less players in Canada than Canada but still field an extremely competitive um team which is interesting when you think about it um hello from Belfast Northern Ireland my girlfriend is from um not far from Belfast She's not, her family is. I'll be, I'll be uh, more precise. Okay, so the reason I'm on, I'm live today, um, and I do have to run fairly quickly, so this has to be fairly short, but I sent some questions. I made a few videos. They were kind of from my earlier days. They're kind of poorly made. The thumbnails on them suck. You can't read the, the title on it. Um... um and uh, and so they're from my early days. And I love um, legitimate criticism. So uh, Daniel from California has um, provided me with some feedback on the, has called BS on my stance on the stick length. And I appreciate that. If you guys are watching any of my stuff, um, If you guys are watching any of my stuff and you're, you see BS, um, please call me out on it. Um, I appreciate that. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> because I am here to help players. And I'll explain how my position, I believe, is helping players. And maybe you guys can help me here. Um, holy, we're getting a lot of questions. Okay. Um, so... That is that's why we're here today. So I talk about my stick length video. So first, I want to explain um, my stance, and then I'm going to talk about um, Crosby, McDavid, and Kane's stick handling um, or stick length secret. And and you know the reason I'm I'm opening this up to 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 see what feedback you guys have is because I've had a lot of smart people tell me I'm wrong on this, and I'm still sticking to my guns on a few things here. So. If someone can come up with a better uh, an argument that can convince me, I'm all ears. I'm seriously all ears. So let me first start by explaining um, how and why I say stick length doesn't matter. Now, now, even though I say that, I'm not actually meaning it. Of course, your stick length matters. I have a stick length that's, that works for me. I have a curve that I prefer. I have a lie that I prefer. Um, I've tried a lot of different sticks. I've tried a lot of different lengths. Um, and I've settled on something that works pretty well for me. Obviously, Kane and, and uh, Datsuk and Crosby and, and um, McDavid, they all have different um, stick lengths too, right? And you, some people might notice that like uh, Crosby, Datsuk, and Kane have a lower lie, they have a very straight blade, and they have, um, you know, sometimes a shorter stick. 
I agree that there's probably an optimal length stick for each person. Now here's where I ran into trouble as a player. I ran into trouble as a player when I, I thought that I needed to change my stick curve, my lie, and my length in order to make my mechanics better. That's when I got into trouble. Okay, I thought that the problem with my shot wasn't my, my shooting mechanics, I thought it was my stick length mechanics. Now, that led me on a wild goose chase or to adjust my, my lie, my curve, my length, and my shot might have gotten better with a, a, a more optimized stick, and it did, okay? So I agree with you that uh, stick length does matter. There's probably an optimal stick length. What I'm saying, the reason I say it doesn't matter, is to dissuade people from, from believing that that is the thing to optimize. Your mechanics are the thing to optimize first. Once those are optimized, that should be the highest priority. Once those are optimized, then you should tune the stick. Okay. Once, once you've given priority to your mechanics, then, um, then you want to give priority to the stick. So um, Crosby, Kane, Datsuk all have um, optimized their mechanics, and they've probably found an optimal length stick and uh, lie and curve that works for them. So my argument isn't that it doesn't matter. Of course it matters. That's like saying, you know, um, you know, someone, a Formula One driver, um, you know, can, can, you know, just get by on just the car or just the driving skill, but in a Honda Civic. Okay, no, they need the great car and they need the, the, the great driving ability. But a lot of times people think, oh, if I just upgrade the car, everything will be fixed. But if you can't drive you got a problem. So that's my stance, that's my argument, and it's designed to be helpful to players who are thinking about changing their stick mechanics to fix their shot. I'm encouraging you to look deeper at your mechanics, because even though you think you might have mastered them, um, my guess is you probably haven't. A, a Crosby, a Kane, a McDavid, a Datsuk, these guys have mastered the magic mechanics, Therefore, you know, they're able to be adaptive in all situations. That's what makes them hockey wizards. So that's my point there. That's their secret. They've mastered their own magic mechanics. You can give them any stick and they'll be good. They're probably better with their stick, right? They're probably better with an optimized stick. But that's my point. So I'm not arguing you. I 100% agree. I think your point is valid. I'm hoping that what I'm saying makes sense. I'm going to check out the questions now here. Um... See here. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Um, Daniel, what do you mean by um, physics don't change? Yeah, I, I don't understand how to do the, the DM thing. Uh, Dan, can, can you... Uh oh Could you email me? Um, Jason at train2.0.com Okay, I got bad news. I just redid my, accidentally refreshed my live stream. I'm hoping people can still see. It still says you're online, but I lost all the um, questions and comments. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's all popping up now. Okay. Um, Yeah, so if you could just email me, that would be fantastic. Um, I agree. Physics do not change. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. Um, the um, shooting mechanics, uh, quick overview is that you must load 
with your top hand. Um, and I've had drills specifically designed to teach you how to um, learn to load with the top hand like the top players do. <clears throat> um, I'm just checking my email here. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I agree with you. The physics do not change. My suggestion is that the physics created by your body's mechanics, your principles of those mechanics, is more important than the stick length. That's my suggestion. <laughs> yeah, like, um, got a lot of good question, you know, good points here. Um, you know, I'm surprised um, uh, this always yields so much debate. Yeah, you, you know, you're right. You're, you're right. Short sticks might be... Um, you know, the the key thing. They might be. I don't know. But I know a lot of crappy players who use short sticks. The mechanics are more important. Their, their own physical mechanics are more important. That is, long sticks can lift the puck off the ice if you have a, um, if you have the right mechanics. I'm just refreshing my video here or my email to to get the to get your email Daniel Holy Um you're right you're right, you are changing physics with a longer stick. You're totally changing. Um, you're, you're totally changing physics with a longer stick. You're right. There's probably a stick length that is going to impact the... Um, there's probably a, a stick length that's going to work optimally with your mechanics. 100%. I totally agree. <laughs> You're very smart in, in knowing this, right? I can tell. And, and you're right that long sticks directly affect and impact um, the form. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. There's something. So the, the two things to look at is um, something called, uh, it's a concept from Joshua Waitskin. And he uh, is the author of the book, um, The Art of Learning. And he's also was the subject of the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer. Um, because I think he was the youngest ever world ch champion or something in chess. Um, and then he learned Tai Chi Chuan, which is otherwise known as push hands, in record time. So he called he had something called learning the micro, no, learning learning the micro from the macro. Meaning, um, the... Um, uh, so what that, that means is that you can learn little individual technical things by learning the principle as a whole. So my whole thing is um, is that you can learn the principles of movement, right? If you have the principles of movement down, if you have the right mechanics down, the magic mechanics down, the, the um, uh, holy, <laughs> just, I, can't, I get distracted by the questions here. That are popping up. Um, the the thing about that is that if your mechanics are dialed in, then your um, then it doesn't matter the stick length, right? You might have let's just say let's let's do this example. Sidney Crosby takes a long stick, um, and he's got perfect mechanics, and he shoots the puck um, with a long stick. Maybe the shot is forty five miles per hour, 
then he takes a shorter stick and maybe it's 55 miles an hour and then he takes an even shorter stick goes back down to 45. There's probably an optimal point right in the length of the stick that works for him right the constant is his mechanics right is the mechanics he is using to shoot the length of the stick adjusts his mechanics one way or the other yes but the constant is his understanding of the movement principles so that is um, my point so I'm gonna check here ah, blah, 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 blah. don't treat short sticks as our better opinion as dogma experiment I'm very dogmatic about HOFs I'll recommend chest length what does that mean I don't really know can you say like in general which length is good for different type of players like dribbly fast players etc do you want to call it dogma it's like saying don't be dogmatic about Newton's math that Pluto has yeah you're right you're right Daniel you're a hundred percent correct and I agree with you a hundred percent it is science right it is um, physics and so look at the physics of the the mover right I'll just give you guys an example right if if what we're doing is um, if you if you have the wrong grip, um, your shot is going to be weaker whether you have a long stick or a short slip stick. You fix the grip, um, doesn't matter, so this is part of your mechanics, you fix your grip, you're going to, oh, Hall of Famers, got it. Um, so, you know, you fix the grip, all of a sudden a whole bunch of mechanics start working better together. Short stick, long stick, you have a better... Um, uh, you have a better shot, okay? Now, is there an optimal length stick? Yes. Yes, but let's fix the mechanics first, right? Let's 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 put the important part on the on the on the mechanics. Um, okay, same thing. Do your hips follow through, right? Some people keep their hips locked. Others try to just push with their bottom hand. These are mechanics. You fix these mechanics. Short stick, long stick. You have a better shot. Um, Anyway, um, the uh, uh, so so that's kind of the um, um, my point there, and let's see here. Here's the thing. Okay, here is my here's my end all be all of of recommendation for stick length is experiment with a whole bunch of different sticks. Experiment, experiment, test it. Okay, try different curves. Try different lies. Try ones that are longer. Try ones that are shorter. Uh, no, Daniel, I haven't viewed the album uh, because I have not received it in my email yet. So that's my apologies there. Um, but I am refreshing the page, so yeah, I'm sorry, I still haven't received it in, in uh, email. So all this said, here's how you should choose your stick length. This is the secret, and this is what I presume. Um, uh, this is what I presume Crosby, Kane, and Datsuk did was they tested different length lie, different length sticks, different lies, different curves, different flexes. I presume that they tested them, and I bet you they settled on one that complemented their mechanics. So my suggestion is test them out, test them out, experiment, test, see which one's the best. If you find that a short stick is best for you, that's great. If you find that a long, long one is good for you, that's great. Um, my suggestion before that is to improve your mechanics. Um, while you're shooting with all these different length sticks, your shot shouldn't change a ton. Um, your your um, mechanics should be number one. So I'll take a look here. Uh, da, 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 da. In a baseball scenario, I use a larger glove for third base, bigger than the Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is kind of expensive to uh, try a lot of um, uh, sticks out. You know, one suggestion would be to like buy a bunch of um, wooden sticks. You know, buy a few wooden sticks, and um, and then what you can just do is you can start with a long one and then just start chopping them down, or get a stick, one stick, and put in different length plugs. Um, and Daniel, I'm really sorry. I'm still not receiving it. I still haven't received it. Um, 
so what is it like an album? How long is my stick? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long my stick is. Um, cause I, I just, honestly, I use, um, I, I, I just use different, different length sticks. Um, it's it that's not been a focus for me uh the focus for me has been on improving my mechanics so i can teach you guys to have um better mechanics that's been my focus um yeah so you can get some wooden sticks test them out and hey daniel you might be 100 percent correct the thing is i'm not smart enough to know it you are um you know you have a a, a very uh good view on this so you might be right you might be 100% right. I might be 100% wrong. Um, so what I encourage everyone watching to, watching to do is to, is to test this out. Test out this theory, right? Um, you, know, is, is, you know, see if a really short stick helps. See if a really long sti stick helps. Try the different curves. So yeah, you could buy, you know, three, four different curves um, and, um, and, and put different length plugs in. Test it out. Test it. Test it iterate right if it works that's great if if uh, if it doesn't that's fine too um so so um i really appreciate all you get all your guys's questions um if your body's growing is it a little bit stupid to like shorten it and then like grow a ton because small you know why I don't know. Like, I, I think the main thing is, is that you are, um, um, is that you're constantly testing what works. Uh, the kids across my league can't play hockey because their sticks are too long. That might be the case, right? Um, you know, um, well, I mean, I mean, Daniel, no, you are smart because you are on here. You have a good argument. I fully appreciate it. I fully agree with, with your argument. Like, um, you've raised really important, important points. Um, you know, maybe the kids across the league can't play hockey because, um, you know, their sticks are too long. That's totally reasonable. Or maybe they also don't know how to, they don't, they're not using the correct grip on their stick. Um, bit of time. Uh, yeah, uh, interest in my program. Quick overview of the full Train 2.0 program and everything included in it. Um, yeah, I have talked about that. Um, I'll just do a real quick um, overview. Uh, basically, I cover, my intention is not to teach you hockey skills. Uh, my intention is to help you become a hockey wizard. Um, and what I mean by that is I want to study the absolute best, the, actu the hockey wizards. Um, uh, learn their mechanics, teach them to you. Um, and this is actually all created in a program that's built like software. So what that means is that um, every step of the way, I create a program um, and my coaches help create the programs. We create the drills and flows uh, that are going to teach those mechanics to you. You go try them wherever you have the sticking points, wherever it doesn't make sense. You let us know, um, you send us your video and we continually make adjustments to make that, uh, those instructions, those words, those exercises, those drills, more and more and more and more effective so that you can play more and more like a hockey wizard. Um, so that's, that's in the um, <coughs> membership area. Um, we also do weekly members meetings every week. Um, and so today at 5 p.m. Pacific, and I will be adding more times, but today at 5 p.m. Pacific, we have a membership meeting. <laughs> Um, JD says he got a longer stick and not to bra brag, but he probably has one of the best shots in the league. Stick is to your nose. Um, is it possible to have a hard slap shot with stick that doesn't flex on shot? Um, one, yeah, yes, yes. Um, so long as you're flexing the blade. That's a little tidbit on how Ovechkin shoots. Um, like so stiff stick. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a little harder. Um, but Ovechkin shoots in a very specific way. He uses the toe of his stick to generate his flex. Um look up the 360 view of him shooting, and you'll notice something about how he loads or how he holds the stick. 
uh, might be if it won't be as hard as somebody who uses a flexor advantage. Yep, that's also true. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, and 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 Jay Dizzy. The other thing too is is um, uh, the uh, and I'm just Daniel. Just so you know, I'm just checking my um, email again to see if that pops up. No, sorry, still. Jason at train2.0.com is, is my email. Um, one of the players that I've, and, and this is what first clued me into this, because I also believed that the stick, short stick length was important. Um, I played with a player who was from Saskatchewan, and I'll tell you this story, okay? He's from Saskatchewan. He was a natural athlete. He was, he was, a, he was wizard-like. Um, and... Here was the interesting thing. He had a really, really, really long stick. Really, really long stick, like up to his head. And he held the stick like with his hand on top of it like this. This is how long this thing was. And But he had the best one-timer I've ever seen, the best one-timer snapshot I've ever seen. That was interesting to me, okay? And I had a pretty short stick. So I, I tried experimenting now with different lengths. So I had a pretty short stick. I didn't have a very good shot, right? My mechanics sucked. They were not good. Um, and you know, they're still not very good, but they're getting better because I've been studying, um, how the wizards shoot. Um, anyway, later that day or later that day, but mid season, we had a baseball tournament, we had a softball tournament and I played softball for a little bit or baseball for a little bit. Um, but I wasn't very good at swinging, right? Cause I didn't have very good mechanics. This player with a really long stick from Saskatchewan, right? He was just effortlessly just bing just absolutely sending balls flying. And I was like, something clicked in for me. I was like, huh, interesting. This guy's got a great shot, and he can swing the baseball bat effortlessly. Um, maybe it's nothing to do with my stick length. Maybe it's to do with, with you know, his mechanics. Maybe he's a better player than me because of his mechanics. He had a way better shot than me. Way longer stick. So, um, and hey, maybe he might have been better with a shorter stick. I don't know, right? I have no clue. He might have been better with a shorter stick. That said, um, I'm sure Josiah, Josiah can can help me with the shooting or the the swinging mechanics. I think they're a bit better now, but um, at the time I, I I went ah you know this guy's got way better mechanics than me, right? That's why he's able to get these shots off even with a really long stick. Uh, a few more questions here. Uh, must he be pretty strong to shoot like Ovechkin with his toe and style? Uh, no, that's the thing, is, is you don't necessarily have to be um, as strong. Because again, it's the magic mechanics. Should you stick handle more with the heel of or mid blade? Um, you should stick handle, you should dribble with your heel, generally. Um, I think Pavel Barber recommends you, you, you stick handle with your toe up. <laughs> Um, and I tend to agree with that. I think even if you look at Pavel Barber, who's a pretty good stick handler, if I, I think, um, he, I think he actually even recommends having a quote-unquote longer stick so that the toe is up when you stick handle. But double-check me on that. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so when you, when you dribble, when you dribble, you should generally be on the heel. And then when you're pulling it, um, you're generally cupping it one way, and then when you're going around the back, you're also kind of around the heel, as per what Dale Belfry says, says, and I also go over that in the latest version. Um, what do you think of FBV skate sharpening? Oh, um, uh, I don't really like a uh, flat bottom V. I, the, 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 um, actually, you know what? I'm indifferent. But I've found my, my best skate sharpenings come from a company called Maximum Edge. Um, yes, are, are the breaking down all the mechanics of the NHL shot in the members area, uh, and are there drills to practice? Yes, and those are going in there. Um, <laughs> using unique cases isn't much of an argument. We need to use the average as a model. Well, that kind of goes against the entire point of um, Train 2.0, which is to actually study the anomalies, not the average. Um, so, you know, you're right. My, my, my case might be totally off, right? 
um, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, do I show Vatican shots mechanics? No, because I'm still researching them, um, but in depth. So um, Ovechkin shot mechanics will be um, in the membership area. If a guy's a phenomenal shot and uses a long stick, that can be credited to purely unique genetics, not demonstrable science. Oh. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Kovalev might be an interesting player to study. He's one of the only players I've seen that uses the toe stick handle. Um, I, I, I think he, like, um, so uh, other Daniel, other, aka Silky Mittens, um, I think he still uses his heel to dribble, but he'll use his toe to like stick handle to maneuver the puck. So that's kind of the difference. Um, yeah, what's special that um, Panarin does is he's going to use his top wrist and hand to to, to create whip on the stick. That's what he does. That's in the membership area cages. Um, yeah. Lion A is also insane. Um, he uses his top hand a ton. So here's... I'd be interested to see the peer-reviewed... Um, research on shooting mechanics um, and stick length. I don't think it exists. Maybe it does. I don't know. In my opinion, who is the most complete player in history? Uh, speed, stick handling, everything. Um, yeah, I've looked at Shea Weber's shot. Um, the thing you're going to notice with him is notice what happens with his front foot, his left foot, when he shoots. Um, pay attention to that. That's what he does a little differently than most. Um, most complete player in history, I don't know, those things don't really interest me. Um, I just study the best and teach that to, to my followers. Um, What's so special about Kane's skating mechanics? He's, in my opinion, the smoothest, best, most agile skater. What's special is that um, he has a, quite a light knee bend, no knee bend. He uses hip hinge. Um, and he's going to use his heels a lot to stride. And he's also going to, he has the best hips in the game, or some of the best hips in the game. He's in that, he's in that upper echelon of, of the the best hips. I guess McDavid would probably have the best <laughs> hips in the game. Um, uh, uh, so that's kind of what he's doing a little differently. Light knee bend, very little knee bend. Um, best place to get footage of breaking down mechanics of a player? Um, well, in the... Uh, Train 2.0 membership area is probably the best. <laughs> I, I have um, um, a, an entire folder of NHL clips um, ready to go, and then that's, that folder is getting built up more and more um, every day. So that's probably uh, the best spot. Yeah, membership area, dig around YouTube, that's the other one. Uh, Daniel, I agree with you. It's important to study past players. The Soviet Union cannot be discounted. I love the Soviet Union. Uh, you may have read my article on Anatoly Tarasov. Um, he absolutely intrigues me. I know other Daniel, uh, Silky Mittens, loves the USSR as well. Uh, their training programs are absolutely revolutionary and should not be forgotten. <laughs> Crosby's hips are great. Carl Hagelin and McDavid ski the same way. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I don't know enough about Carl Hagelin. Um, yeah, like, you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the Russians, um, you know, Paul Coffey, um, Bobby, or were, they, these guys were all wizards. They all had wizard mechanics. 
And yes, tips for wingers on breakouts. Practice picking the puck up off the wall and shoulder check prior to receiving the puck. Know what you're doing before you get the puck. Those are my tips for wingers on um, breakouts. Also, learn the explosive seal so that, so that if you're under pressure, um, you can freeze the, freeze the boards. Explosive seals mentioned in the Sidney Crosby puck protection formula um, on my YouTube, and then also um, detailed uh, with a detailed breakdown in the membership area. Coaching. And the coaching center I've received produced the greatest players in hockey history. Agreed, 100%. Those guys, um, you know, the interesting thing with Anatoly Tarasov is that, and the Red Army, is that they went from never playing hockey to international hockey powerhouse in 10 years. So that is something that is really um, interesting um, to me. Yes, totally. Yeah, and they were, and they, and they did things in a, um, a scientific, a scientific way. Now, Daniel, you are obviously a smart, intelligent um, follower. So, one of the one of, an important thing to consider, at least that I think from a scientific view, is to understand the difference between um, our ability to have peer-reviewed, um, you know. Uh, well-controlled research, and by well-controlled, it means that all the variables are controlled. Problem in real life is that we cannot have that. A more accurate way for us to, you know, use scientific inquiry is to split test and, and experiment. So to test one approach and then another. So that's why I say I'm not smart enough to know what the mechanic, the best mechanics are. Um, and if you look at the peer-reviewed research, I don't think you'll find that either because it doesn't exist. The problem is too difficult to define. So my suggestion in, in, in life and in hockey is to split test, to um, A-B test what mechanics, what stick lengths you're using. How long does a stick does McDavid use? No clue. My title was misleading probably. <laughs> Since you've pretty much given out your numbers, find a call if you have any questions about something about hockey. Give me a text on that number. It doesn't. That number doesn't take calls. Uh, yeah, Silky Mint says he's watched the Red Army on Netflix. Tarasov studied the Soviet ballet, and his players were doing weird dances off and on ice. Guys, look up um, AJAX Academy, A J A X, which is a soccer academy in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. Um, and look up what that how they do dance um, as well as part of their crazy stuff they're doing that in the 90s and AX Academy has produced um, a lot of the best um, soccer players. Um, what's your opinion on hockey systems in midget AAA league? The best teams don't seem to play a system. They freelance and they're more creative. I think Daniel and Daniel both Soviet fans would like this in, is that I don't think the Red Army had um, much in terms of a system. They actually uh, had more of... Um, sorry, let's, let's define the difference between systems and plays, right? So like a lot of teams have plays, right? They have a certain forecheck, um, they have a certain breakout, but they can't, um, they can't be creative um, because if something falls outside of the system, they can't improvise. Um, so the best thing to do is have a system um, that are not a system that that um, uh, a system about that, that encompasses everything. So, um, um, so the the Red Army they they played with each other so much they didn't necessarily have plays but they had a system. They were able to know each other so well. That's something that's kind of missing in the NHL today. Is that it's so tactical based. Am I doing private online training sessions? Yes, I do that with my one-on-one -on -one clients. Unfortunately, I'm full right now. I have a uh, wait list that's gathering. If you'd like to be added to it, send me an email, jason at train2.0.com. Um, okay, Daniel, I'll try and find that then. Anyway, I've stayed on much too long. Systems are key in youth nowadays. They shouldn't be, but they are. Yep, that's right, because you can kind of create like a, 
uh, a system that, um, like the trap, for example, doesn't require much skill, but um, uh, doesn't require much skill, but you know can screw up players that have a bit of skill. Um, but that can be broken with extremely creative players. Oh, I might have got something here. No, I didn't. Sorry, <laughs> I got another email. Uh, are all summer camps the same? Same drone drills and coaching? Uh, y usually, um, unless you're getting the unless you're going to see wizard coaches. Um, I kind of I've come across Boris Doroshenko. Um, Stride Envy if he does stuff. Um, um, Adam Nicholas. Um, the um, uh, Daryl Belfry. I don't think he does uh, camps like that. And I'm sure there's other wizard coaches around. I, I always hear little things. I just don't see them online, so I can't necessarily talk to them. Um, but for the most part, they're all drone drills and drone coaching. So what I'd suggest is that you just simply find pay for the cheapest one and go out to that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're probably right. Get get the cheap go to the cheapest summer camp and just treat it as ice time and an opportunity to work within the system. Um and um yeah, anyway, like I said, I'm, I've been on the phone much too long here. i got to get to work on version 0.9.0. Maybe I'll call it something else. Um, thank you guys for chatting. I appreciate it. Um, lots of fun to debate this. Um, let me know what other, other topics to debate that you guys are going to get all fired up about. Um, send those to me, emails, whatever. And uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Peace out.